be caller 10 216 578 or 800-348-1007. To all our men and women in uniform. I've been a lifelong fan, 20 years in the military, come back, and the find your afternoon show is f***ing horrible. Thanks. From the Alan Cox Show. Horrible, horrible. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Send me a text there. AlanCoxShow.com is where you can watch the show live if you like. Uh, tip of the cap to Albin Wickingston, who's assisting in the video department today. Aw, Albs. Albs. I was going to say, you guys are um, on a first name basis with uh, him or her, and uh, I'm not. Hey, your guardians are back home tonight, and provided all of this nasty weather passes through, they will be set to start up. 641st pitch. Uh, we'll get out of here around 6, make room for your pregame coverage. But it's the first of three against Seattle. Uh, 640 tonight on WMMS and on the iHeartRadio app. Keep in mind the remainder of the month, we're almost unbelievably... Uh, I guess we are halfway through June. We're past halfway through June. About all month long, you can use the promo code CARDINAL for 20% off whatever you want over at CLE Clothing Company. Uh, no matter how many times you want to use it. Then come July, we'll have another uh, promo code for you. Uh, we will be out tomorrow, and we will be out Friday. Uh, so Thursday after today will be the last uh, live show of the week. Is Mary with us on Thursday? You are, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we'll be out on Friday. Next week on the show, I'll have Guardians tickets for you uh, for the July 5th game. They're playing the San Francisco Giants. I wonder what uh, promotion they're doing that day. July 5th. Is that, that's not the, um, no, it's you're the going. for the 4th of July. You're going to the Shaq Diesel game. Yeah, I'm going to the Shaq Diesel game on Saturday. That's this weekend. It's going to be fun. Josh Naylor bobblehead. $2 Miller Lights before the game. Good times. Tonight, for people who bought that special ticket package, uh, tonight is uh, Peanuts Schroeder Bobblehead. It's also Bark in the Park. You ever take your dog? No. Bark in the Park. She's she's too annoying. Yeah, a lot of wet dogs out there. Well, yeah. uh, that's the thing is you know, people bring their dogs whether they're annoying or not, I have to think. Well, I that's mean, why, yeah. You don't want to be one of those people. Well, my dog's not good with other dogs. Ah. Not, she doesn't, like, get... She just wants me to hold her the whole time, so that's just annoying for me. Does she want to play with them? Does no. she get... Uh, she, like, bears her teeth she, around them? Or? She doesn't bear her teeth. She just tries to sit on my lap the whole time. I see. She'll eventually get to know a dog and, and play with it, but it just she's not around a lot of dogs. Gotcha. So, so she's kind of scared of dogs. Well, they're doing Bark in the Park tonight. Tomorrow, it's Juneteenth, and they're doing Juneteenth T-shirts. Uh, pride flags on Friday. Pound Cake making an appearance on Friday. Oh, is he really? Yeah. At the ball game? Yeah. he's. Oh, the... you didn't talk about this yesterday? No. no. He is. This is the first I'm hearing of it. He's walking the ball out because Kelly yeah. Brownson from the Browns and Molly... What's her Kearney from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, they're doing the first pitches. Oh, cool! And Pound yeah. Cake is the one delivering the ball, the ceremonial hey. ball deliverer. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, his ball handling skills, as best as we can tell, pretty good. My uh, a friend of mine that I've known forever is on the. Man, I don't want to say it wrong. It's not like the Pride Committee. Committee? Is that of the Guardians? So I don't know if they have a whole division to, dedicated to like LGBTQ people or like if it's a committee or like I don't want to undermine. Like their outreach. Uh, kind of. Yeah. I don't want to undermine what they do. Right. But they hit me up and was like, this was probably in, this was last year. I hadn't moved yet. I was still in Cleveland. And they hit me up and was like, hey, we're getting stuff together for our Pride Month in June. 
do you think Cody would want to be a part of this? I was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm saying yes. <laughs> I was like, sign him up for whatever you want. And she was like, you, I kind of have to have. <laughs> Mary, you're not <laughs> gay. <laughs> um, no, she wasn't like, signing herself up. She no, was signing was him saying, up. Yes, whatever yeah. you need Cody to do, he's going to do oh, it. Oh, I see. And I she thought, was I like, see. yeah, okay, can you give me his email maybe? <laughs> right. I was like, no, 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 he's in. Don't even worry about it. He'll do it. And then I connected them. And then I hadn't heard anything since. It's probably like October or November. I hadn't heard anything since. So when uh, he told us about that yesterday, I was like, oh, I'm so glad. So glad that I Hi, Cody. Out. We talked to your representative, Mary Santora, yeah. and she said that you're down for whatever. Oh, good for him. So you will that's the game you'll be at? No. Oh, no. That's on Friday. That's the Friday game. That's the Friday game. He'll walk out, and they'll put his name on the Jumbotron and all that? I don't know. Conceivably? Oh, he, didn't, he didn't mention that? It just says, he, he sent us like a screenshot, and it was on his story yesterday. He was like, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, is he Cody Brown now, or is he still Pound Cake in those situations? I, I wonder. Never. Yeah, I wonder. I think right. it's like Cody, like radio personality Cody Brown. Right. You know, and like he, he's had this locked So he's not on the radio from, anymore. But he's had this, lo- like I said, they reached out to me like last fall. I see. So he's had it locked in for months probably. Gotcha. Oh, good for him. That'll be fun. I was hoping he was going to be the one to throw the pitch. That would have been fun. Oh, God. Oh, it would have been so, they know better. so great. Mm-hmm. So great. I hope maybe they let him take a practice. He should ask them. He probably doesn't want to put himself game in that situation. Game ball delivery by local radio personality Cody Brown. That's, That's what, what I thought. Says, yeah. Oh, game ball delivery. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's walking it out to it. Molly Kearney and who else? Uh, Callie Brownson. Okay. Who And who is she? She is a coach for the Browns. Ah, okay. Cool. She's a pal. She hangs out at uh, High and Dry. Oh, okay. She's cool. Good. Good, good, good. It's fun talking football with her because she knows so many, like, behind the scenes things. Like Mary? Uh, Yeah. Yes, like Mary knows. the day they signed Donovan Mitchell? (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And so she gets uh, gets, uh, some good uh, behind the scenes stories and stuff. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's very exciting. I guess I have the schedule here. I guess I could have looked ahead. Game ball delivery. Cody Brown, Cleveland radio host. He still does Pride Radio, so. That's true. True. Yes. That's on the app. It's on the iHeartRadio app. It's also on the HD radios. (laughs) Yeah, that is true. (laughs) Yes. I'm trying to Oh, no. Listen, it's, you know, (laughs) take the Wayback Machine in 2003 and tune in on the HD and... I like that they're still trying to make HD happen. That's beautiful. Good for him. Well, that's exciting. The play ball kid. Oh, so they have like different people for every. Play there's ball. somebody sings the Canadian national anthem, and then the, this there are four people doing the ceremonial first pitch, and then Cody brings the. Well, I imagine he no he delivers the game ball. He doesn't give them the first pitch ball, right? That's a separate ball. Well, there's a there's a. Who does he deliver the game ball to? Well, that's my question. Like when I threw out the first pitch, I imagine they handed me a ball, but it wasn't like a special delivery. I think he's delivering the ball to the first pitch throwers. Mm. I have no idea. Oh, you think okay? Because by the time the players get out there and the pitchers warming up, like they have all those people gone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, good. That's Friday. The Pride Night Parade. And then Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Right. DJ Diesel. Mm-hmm. Post game presented by White Claw. All right. On Saturday. Oh, that's an afternoon game. Yeah. That's a 410 game. Yep. Solid. So is because I'm I have read it a couple times and I have to claim vagaries on the part of what I've seen. So is Melt going away? Said they filed bankruptcy. Well, Chapter 11, which is different. Like Chapter 7, the Alex Jones thing, that's when they liquidate everything you've got. I imagine they'll close, like, most of their locations and probably just have the Lakewood location. So they'll go, like, back to... The roots. The roots. Okay. Uh, Melt Bar and Grilled filed for bankruptcy after... Which I can't believe it took this long, quite frankly. I mean, these guys expanded way too fast. And when you do that, obviously, you have to contend with, you know, 
just it's a lot of costs. There's a lot of costs. Lots so you're in, invariably your quality will drop. Your you know, and people fell in love with that Lakewood melt. You know, people would when we first came to town. Again, I'm not a grilled cheese guy, but they had other stuff going on. But that was what everybody would pitch it to me. Yeah, you got to go to melt. You got to go to melt. I remember when we lived in Tremont, I used to run into Matt Fish walking his dog all the time. And um, there was one out in Independence when we used to work out in Oak Tree. There was one out there. And I think they put them all over. They were in, like, Toledo. And, you know, so I guess when they were on fire, they were like, well, let's ride this for everything we can. But uh, if they're going to go back to the Lakewood one, you might have people who have uh, subsequently been turned off in the in the – intervening years i don't know but again they're not alone in this you know obviously a lot of restaurants are like look man covid just chopped us off at the knees so it's not all because they were overextended but again cleveland's not you know the the northeast ohio area it's not that big you know what i mean like you don't need eight restaurants in this area i don't, I don't remember how many they had but there was a time where they had a lot of well, there's a lot of demand for it for a while. Yeah, but it doesn't take that. People like to crow about how you can get everywhere in 20 minutes. You know, you open a couple of them and then go to those. But I get it. Like when, you know, when, you, when you're on fire, you go, well, hey, l- listen, man, let's put this here and there. And But, I mean, the last time I was in one was the Independence one. That was years ago. That one's been closed for a minute. Closed for a while, yeah. So I wasn't clear, and everything I had read, I wasn't clear if they were uh, all closing or if they were just like, oh, we're, the ones we haven't closed, we're going to keep open, but we're restructuring or whatever. Uh, they had uh, a location at Cedar Point that closed. They closed in Dayton, Canton, Independence, Avon. That was the one closest to me. The Avon one closed. That yeah. was and Cleveland um, Heights, yeah. Brian's daughter, well, I guess Brian's ex-wife, lived in Avon Lake for a while. And so him and his daughter would always go to Mount. Like, that was one of their little spots because it's right by Mitchell's out there. Yeah. So one of their, like, little daddy-daughter date nights would always be Avon Melt and then Mitchell's. Yeah. That's a bummer. So they had already closed. I, I, I feel like they have another one other than Lakewood that's still open, though. But maybe not. Maybe they're just paring down to the original spot. Because it's no. in the same spot in Lakewood, right? Yeah. Like, that didn't move. Yeah, and it expanded at one point because it used to just be one side, like, just that room where the bar is. And then it expanded, and they got that other uh, side of the dining room. But, yeah, I've been going there since they opened. The original meld opened in Lakewood in 2006. Uh, the company reportedly owes, according to this article in Fox 8, the company reportedly owes an estimated 100 to 199 creditors. That's a pretty big gap. You know, and I wonder why they do that, because I don't know if it's for legal reasons or for PR reasons when they always go, well, they've got debts between a million and $15 million. I mean, you know, somebody knows the accounting on that. I don't know. But maybe it'll be good for them to pare down like that. Maybe it'd be good. But... It sucks for people who really, really like it because everybody, you know, you know, wherever you're from, everybody knows about one spot that blew up and then they go, well, let's do let's make more people happy in other places. And then it kind of deflates over time. I mean, that happens irrespective of a global pandemic. But COVID obviously did no favors for restaurants. And so, you know, restaurants are still hanging on to the, you know, it's not just their fault, but I mean, restaurants in general, they're all still hanging on to the COVID thing. They're going to be claiming COVID problems for the next decade. You go to any place that opened post-COVID, boy, and they were still in the immediate aftermath. You go, yeah, it's going to be like this for a while. But You mean in what way? Like well, like getting people to or? pay more. Yeah. Oh. I mean, once you get people used to paying more, they'll do it. It's just that you can't have a decrease in the quality. If people really like what you're kicking out, they'll they'll happily pay more for it. 
or they'll wait in line, you know? First time we ever went to the Melton Lakewood, we were, like, standing there for, like, 35 minutes. I'm like, this better be goddamn good. This better be what everybody told me it was going to be. And? I don't even remember what I had. Mm. Um, but I didn't walk away mad. So, you know, it's like, I guess if you, in your mind, if you go, well, let's, you know, let's do the four corners of Cleveland, right? Let's do Avon and Independence and Cleveland, whatever. But then you're like, oh, let's do Dayton. Again, I've never run a restaurant. I don't know. All I know is if you're not busy and full every single night, you're losing money. So I don't know. But I thought that it would suck if they all went away. And so everything I read, it was very unclear as to if that was going to be the case. I always want to think that it's like people are switching to healthier options, but then also no, they aren't. You know what I mean? Well, but like most restaurants. The McDonald's never gone out of business. But yeah, but I mean, there's a there's a ceiling to that too. You know, that's why when all these, <laughs> you know, people know what's going on when Target and Walmart and all these other big retailers make a big show. We're slashing our prices. Yeah, that means that you were jacking up the prices that much, and everybody got used to paying for it. But then you started to see customers dwindling. You're not you're not going to take a loss if you're slashing your prices thirty no, percent. That means you had them jacked up thirty percent. Record prices, of course. Or record profits. Profits, yeah. And people, enough people started to complain, or you saw, you know. A, a dip in in customers. We're like, oh, okay. Well, we'll just make a big show of this. But it's not like they're they're not doing you any favors. So, but but again, to your point about people eating different or healthier or whatever, there's versions of that. So you can go to a place like that, and they're going to have a couple of things on the menu. Well, you know, people you've talked about like people that get a giant salad with ham on it and they go, I'm eating healthy this week. It's yeah. iceberg lettuce and ham and a gallon that's, of ranch. This is my dad. Good. <laughs> right. That, your dad. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm eating I healthy. I, I think about it like, you know, there's all kinds of evidence showing that like Gen Z is not drinking alcohol. Right. And right. That, that they or just, banging or getting high. Or, well, they just know. aren't. They're not partiers like right. previous generations were. So I remember, I mean, I've worked in bars and restaurants my entire since I was 18 my entire adult life that I was able to and I remember in like you know 2010 when craft beer started to explode and it became this huge movement where like drinking was cool like and I don't mean like partying but like craft beer and whiskey and all those things became such a big part of so many people's personality your typical quote hipster you know what I mean who's into IPAs and everything like that but that was 12 years ago. So I'm like, does everything have that pendulum where it was like, okay, we saw that big, big explosion and it lasted a, up until COVID. You yeah. know what I mean? And then after that, are people just not that interested anymore? Where they're like, yeah, I mean, craft beer's done all it's, it, it can do. Drinking's bad for you. Gen Z's not as into the party scene, you know? Does that affect these types of places? Where it's like, no, you don't need... 11 craft beer and craft grilled cheese restaurants. Well, right. That, and, and, and that's why a lot of these craft breweries were shutting down. Because they're like, we can't, they, they, they would either hope to cash out, you know, with a huge distributor, or they're like, eh, we got to close up shop. The bubble burst. People yeah, because you're not, you're not doing anything new to an IPA. You're not doing anything <laughs> right. new to a stout. Right. Anybody who's had one or has wanted to have one has had their fill of craft beer right now. I just don't know how anybody, I mean, you go to a beer cooler and look at all the beers. I just don't know how anybody gets attention. I don't know how anybody stands out in the in, in the craft brew biz. I don't know how they do it. Throw a WMMS label on it. Yeah, that's how we do it, baby. Except for the buzzard brew. Oh, Put the buzzard yeah. on there. <laughs> people are telling me that the Menor and Fairlawn melts are still open. But what about the people, weren't people getting melt tattoos? Oh yeah, because they were you like, got, like free goat cheese for life. Or something. Is that no, what you know, it was? You get like fifteen percent off. Ah, are you kidding me? Yeah, like... for a tattoo on my body, fifteen uh-huh. percent. <laughs> something like that, fifteen yeah. or twenty percent. It, yeah. it, it was just a discount for life. Well, it was gonna be like three bucks. <laughs> get out of my face! You'd discount have to. I mean, the tattoo life. alone is gonna cost you two hundred dollars. That's so why it's considered eat. a bad business decision. You have to eat it 
melt 70 times before you paid for your own tattoo. Well, in their defense, that's one of those things that businesses do, and they can't believe that people go out and do it. They're like, you know what would be funny is if we told people to get a tattoo, and then we gave them, like, a discount or something. They go, ha, that would be funny. And then people start doing it. And they're 25% like, off for life. There you go. That's not enough money. Even at that price, it would have to you'd have to go fifty times to get your money back. Well, some That's people once a week for a year. Nobody's if you're eating if that you're much getting milk. the tattoo, you probably love the place. Once a week for a year, you're eating grilled che- a, a, <laughs> a, a, a artisan grilled cheese sandwich. I don't. I don't They're putting the that. art in artisan, Mary. And so, even after that, it takes you a year to get it back. They. Has anybody found out if uh, they will announce Pound Cake as 2023's best sports talker in Cleveland? No idea. That should absolutely be part of his announcement. Voted by the readers of Cleveland Scene Magazine, Cleveland's best sports talker. That's got to be in there. That's the connective tissue. I also forgot he had a job. I was like, text him and tell him to call in. Like he's, he's still at work. work. Mm-hmm. Like he's not at work right now. <laughs> yeah, right. He's not doing anything. Tell him to call the show. Uh, we'll get some hot celebrity gossip on the way, courtesy of Perez Bilton. I will have Sarah Silverman take.